welcome to J-Hook Magic. I'm Jess. Uh, today we I am doing a beginner friendly granny square crossbody bag. Um, it's going to be super simple. Uh, you're going to think you can't do it, but you can. So give it a try. And um, okay, let's get started. Uh, this is the things that you are going to need. You are going to need yarn. Uh, with my last one, I did a lot of, uh, like ombre yarn, variegated. You can really customize and just go crazy with this. Uh, today I am just going to be using, uh, Red Heart. I believe this is in Cherry, Cherry Red. And it's a, uh, number four worsted weight. Again, you can use any weight, any color, you can switch colors up, but for tutorial purposes, I am just going to use a solid red. Um, you will need a tape measure in case you want to measure to see how big your square is. If you want to uh, duplicate mine or if you want to make it a little smaller, a little bigger, uh, measure your for your strap. You're going to need a yarn needle to weave in your ends and to sew on the handle to the bag. Uh, some pins and a yarn, um, not a yarn needle, a sewing needle. This is going to be for when we put the liner in. Uh, I recommend that um, you want to match your thread to the color of your fabric, of your lining. So try to get it as close as you can to your lining. Uh, I am using a H hook. Again, this is very customizable. Make it your own. You can use any size hook that you want, any size yarn, any anything. Just make it your own. Be crazy, be creative. Uh, scissors for cutting the yarn, cutting our fabric, because we're going to cut the fabric to be the size of our crossbody bag. And of course, fabric. Um, you can get this anywhere. You can use anything. Um, you don't need much, uh, you know, depending how big you make your bag. Uh, you can get, uh, like two fat quarters from like, um... Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart. Um, I actually got this piece of fabric at Dollar Tree a while ago. I don't know. I just saw it and I was like, this is so cute. So this is going to be my lining today for my bag. Okay. Now that we have all the materials and everything, let's get started. All right. So let's get started on this crossbody bag. Uh, to begin, we are just going to make a granny square. Again, if you know how to make a granny square or you make it, um, you're, you know, you have a certain way that you make it, by all means, go ahead and make it your way. Uh, but I am going to show you how I do it. And for maybe anyone who doesn't know how to do it, uh, or would like to try my way. Um, I like to start with a magic ring. Uh, again, if you want, you can start by putting a slip knot on your hook and chaining like three or four and going back into that first stitch and starting that way. Um, but I am going to do a magic circle. So what I do is I take three fingers, I lay the yarn in across my fingers, hold it with my thumb. And I wrap it around so it kind of makes like an X. Am I in frame? And then I turn my hand around. So now I have like two lines uh, going across my three fingers. I bring my little pinky up and it holds that string there, the yarn there. Then I take my hook and what you're going to do is you're going to go under the first um you know string of yarn you're going to grab 
the second one. See, and you can kind of use like in between your fingers to kind of slide. Pull it out. Turn. And then you're going to go under, like under over here where your pinky was holding. And then you're going to pull that one through the hoop turn and you have a magic circle plus a chain one so we have a chain one here okay um i hope you guys understood that or could see like what i was doing if not again chain three or four go in the first uh chain and you can start that way um all right, so moving along, now we're going to chain two. That will give us three chains here, but we remember we chained one, so we just need two more to make it three. Okay, that three, that chain three is going to count as our first double crochet. Now we are going to yarn over, go into the magic circle, ring, whatever you want to call it. And we are going to put two more double crochets. One and two. Okay. So this is like a little granny cluster here. So if I end up saying like cluster or three double crochets, this is what I mean. Now we are going to chain two. And then we are going to put three more double crochets into this magic ring circle chain space however you may do it however you may be doing it or want to call it now after you do your three double crochets we are going to chain two again these are going to end up being our corner spaces but Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. So we did three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two. Now let's do another three double crochets. We need to get to where we have um, four of these uh, granny clusters or four sets of the three double crochets okay there's the third one and so we're going to chain two one two so if we look we have one two three granny clusters so gotta get more yarn here so we have to do one more so let's do one more set of the granny clusters which is three double crow oh, my yarn is splitting excuse me which is three double crochets so that's one and you want to work over that this tail that's hanging out you want to work over that because that's going to make it easier to um cinch up the the center two and three and then we end with a chain two okay so we have one two three four we have four of the granny clusters okay end with a chain two now we want to come over here i don't cinch this yet if you want to go ahead but i don't uh, so what I do is we're going to come over here and we're going to count up to the, am I in frame? Into the third chain. One, two, three. So the top of this third chain, we are going to go into it. Okay. Yarn over, pull through and pull through. 
okay that's a slip stitch so we're just slip stitching to the top of the chain three okay now I will cinch it closed a little bit all right so it should look like this see we have our four granny clusters and then that's our corners um, like I said however you do your um, granny squares please do it your way or if you want to learn a new way or if you just want to do it the same way I'm doing this is how I go so now for the next round I turn the work here is the next spot which is a corner and what I'm going to do is right from here I am going to one two three three chains again this counts as a double crochet so now we are going to insert into the corner and we are going to put two more double crochets to give us our granny cluster now that we are in the corner we must chain two and do another set of three double crochets another granny cluster so the corners will always have a granny cluster chain two and a granny cluster or three double crochets chain two three double crochets sometimes I have to say it when I get to the corners just to remind myself so when I get to the corners, I'll say three, chain two, three, three, chain two, three. And then, you know, um, if you want, you can chain in between, um, the corners and, or the spaces. I don't. So I am just going to head right over here into the next, oops, into the next corner. Yarn over first, Jess. Okay, here we go one two oh boy hold on gotta get more yarn okay two three chain two and now I'm gonna go back in and do three more so one two and three go right to the next corner oh my gosh I keep forgetting to yarn over go to the next corner again I don't chain in between so one two three chain two and one, two, two, three. Okay, we're at the last corner here. So let's go into it and do one, Two, three, chain two, one, two, three. Okay, so now that we are at the end, we got our four corners. We are going to go back to the third, um, the top of the third chain because this counts as our first double so go into the the top of the third chain and we are going to put a slip stitch and then round two is complete if you want you can really cinch this up now you know, just want to pull tight don't pull too tight because then it will break and we don't want that okay and I'll sew that in later Again, you guys know how I am with my ends. Um, okay, I'm going to do one more round with you guys. And then, um, 
you can finish up. If you don't want to turn, you don't have to. Uh, I like to turn each round because it makes it more square. I feel like if you just keep going round and round, sometimes the square like turns and it gets a little wonky looking. But again, you do you. So here we go. We're going to turn our work. Chain three, two, three. Counts as our first double crochet. Now, we have our four corners here, but we also have spaces here. See the spaces? So we are going to work in those spaces. In those spaces, it just gets three double crochets, AKA granny cluster. So this chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we go right into that space and we're gonna put two more in. So one and two. So that gives us our three double crochets. Now we go right to the corner and we're gonna do three double crochets. One, two, three. Then we're gonna chain two, so we're in the corner, and another three double crochets. Two, three. Okay, so now we just did our corner, and now the next is this space here. So in this space here, we are just putting three double crochets. And then as uh, the granny square grows, you are going to have uh, more spaces in between the corners. And in those spaces, you just put three double crochets. That's all it gets. Only the corners get the three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Okay, we are back at a corner. So we are going to yarn over, insert, and put one, uh, two, uh, three, chain two, and one, two, three. Okay, that's our corner. Now we have the space in between. What are we going to do? Yep, you got it. Three double crochets. Okay, Ugh, you got yarn rolling everywhere. Um, we're back to the corner now, and that is three. So one, two, three, chain two, one, two, three. Okay. Now we got our middle space here. One, two, three. All right. We're at our last corner here. So we go one, two, three, chain two, and one, oh, this yarn, two, three. Okay, so now we are back to the beginning of our chain three spot here. Again, slip stitch into the top of the chain three, like so. Okay, and this is what you guys should have so far. And you're just gonna keep going around and around until you get it as big as you want. 
Um, you can also switch colors. You can all, like I said, you could also use a variegated that, or a striping yarn that will just switch colors on its own, which comes out really cool. But, uh, I haven't made a solid color yet, so I'm going to just make mine in solid red. But again, you can switch colors or you can make a solid one like me. Okay, so keep, uh, turning the work, chain three. Go into your spaces, um, into your corners. You're going to have three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And I will meet back up with you when you have your, when I have my square as big as I want it. And you could pause the video and come back when you have your square as big as you want it. And I will let you know how big I went. All right. Hey guys, real quick. Um. I forgot to mention that um, once you get done making your square as big as you want it to be, you need to make two of them. So you got to make two squares of the same size. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then after you do um, the two squares, well, after you do your square, like when you get it uh, as big as you want it, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your work, you're going to chain one, and then you're going to just put a single crochet in each of the double crochets all along. And when you get to a corner, you are going to want to put two single crochets into each corner. And then you just go down and put a single crochet all the way along the sides of uh, the square into each double crochet. And then when you get to a corner, you put two single crochets in. So follow that all the way around. And when you get back to... Um, you get back to like the beginning of it, you're just going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and uh, fasten off. And then do your next square, go as big as you want, do a single crochet all the way around, fasten off, and I'll meet you back here. All right. Okay. Now that we have our squares done, um... This is how big I made mine. And uh, this is how, if you don't know how to count um, your rounds to see how many rounds you went, this is your center. This is the first four granny clusters that we started with. So you want to start with this first top um, granny cluster here. And then we're going to go to the corner. So you're going to go one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I went 10 rounds um, of my granny square. And then I added the single crochet um, border, I guess you could say, just a single crochet around it. Okay. And it is with the, so with the 10 rounds and the single crochet on the outside, it is about 10 inches, 10 inches by 10 inches. I think I was spreading it a little. So it's a 10 by 10 granny square. Um, in case you wanted to make it that big and maybe you're using different yarn, hook, tension, um, that is what mine is. So 10 rounds, single crochet on the outside, 10 by 10. Perfect. Now, we have our two squares, right? Simple. So we're going to put 
got our two squares. We're going to put those aside a second. We're going to get all our parts made and then we're going to assemble it. I like to do the strap next just to get it out of the way. And that way it's done. So then after we're done lining, you can uh, just add the strap and you're done. What I am going to do for mine is I am holding two strands of my Red Heart Super Saver worsted weight yarn, number four, two of them together. Uh, you can do any handle you like. You can do one strand. You can do any stitch you want. Um, you can hold two, three. You can do anything you want. Like I said, this is very customizable and you can really make it your own, which I think is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I am holding two strands of the yarn and I am going to make a slip knot. Put it on my hook and I am going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now you can, again, customizable, your bag, you do you. Uh, you can do anything you want. Sometimes I do half double crochet across. Sometimes I do single. Um, I think I'm going to do single crochet this time across just to make it a little sturdier. And I don't know, I like how it looks. So what you're going to do is you're going to skip the first stitch uh, on your hook and we're going to go to the next stitch. And I'm just going to put one single crochet in each stitch across. Like, oops. Got to make sure you get, if you're holding two strands, make sure you're getting both those strands for the stitch. Okay, now we're at the end. So you should have five single crochets stitches. We're going to chain one and turn. And guys, we're just going to go back and forth doing, putting uh, single crochets in these five stitches. And then a chain one at the end, turn, five stitches. You always want to um, make sure you have five. So at the end of each row, you want to make sure you have five. One, and you by counting, you want to count the little V's on top here. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Chain one. Turn. And one, two, three, four. And five chain one and turn okay so you are going to keep doing the five stitches across chain one turn and just keep going back and forth back and forth until you know the strap is as long as you want it if you want to make this um, like an over-the-shoulder bag you can do that you want to make it where it is a crossbody. Do that. You want to make it where you just hold it onto your wrist. So the length is all going to depend on what you want to use this bag as, what you know, kind of handle you want. I am going to be doing the crossbody, so I need it longer, obviously. So we're going to work on this. Uh, you could pause the video, and then when we come back, I will show you how. Uh, long I went for mine and uh, and then after with the strap 
we will sew up, I'll show you how to sew up the sides of the squares and then we will start with the lining. Welcome back. Okay, so now I have my strap done. I just got done measuring it. It's around uh, 42 inches. I should have went a little longer, but it's okay. Um, you don't want to go too long because eventually it will sh like stretch some. So hopefully it will stretch a little bit, but it should be fine. So our strap is done. We're going to put that to the side. And let's bring our squares back in. All right, so we have our two squares. And what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we are going to sew up three of the four sides. We leave the one side open because obviously you need a pouch, right? <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to take, um, okay. You want to put the two of your wrong sides or bad sides, you know, whatever sides, uh, like see here, I, um, weaved in my ends on this side. So you want these obviously to be on the inside of the bag. So the, so you want the two insides together and just line them up. Okay. Now, um, I like, so you can do this any way you want. Uh, you can sew it up. You can actually put the two, uh, good sides facing, sew it up and then turn it inside out if you want a nice smooth edging. I like to have a little texture on the outside. I think it really makes the bag look nice. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have my two, uh, good, sh good sides showing. Say that five times fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to put a slip knot on your hook. You're going to go to one of the corners and you just want to oops, match them up because what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of be going back and forth. So the stitches kind of line up. So that's why we also put the row of uh single crochets around because this is going to make it a lot easier to sew or crochet together uh you don't have to do this with a crochet hook you could do it with a yarn needle i like to do it with the crochet hook i like again i like the texture of it uh so what you want to do is find the corner now remember in the corner we put two single crochets so you want to go in that first well second single crochet the one to the left so you're going to go into that one the one that's right before the first um single crochet so now you want to find it on here okay right here all right and what you're going to do now that we're through both sides of the squares in the single crochets in the corner space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. We are going to do single crochets all the way down. Sometimes what I like to do is see the spaces in between the clusters. Sometimes I like to match them up and put my finger in there, like through both of them. So then that way the, you could see how the stitches line up. So let's go to the next one. So you go into the fur, the top, uh, oh my gosh, why can't I think in through the first square to the next square through the stitches 
and just keep going all the way down. And we're going to sew these sides together with one single crochet through both of the of the single crochets of both squares. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. So just keep, you know, making sure they're lining up to, you know, the best that you can. And just put a single crochet in. And we're going to go all the way down. Okay. We'll go all the way down. And uh, I'll meet you down. So I'm going to keep doing a single crochet all the way down. And I will meet you down by the corner. Okay, I single crocheted all down the side of the square here, and now we are at the corner. So it is the same thing, I just wanted to show you guys so you don't, you know, just in case if you're a little confused. or When we put those, single, those two single crochets into the corners when we were doing our single crochet border, now we're just going to go, this also helped because now we are just going to go into those you know two single crochets and that connects the corner and now we are on the other side so now we just keep going along and we just keep putting one single crochet into each single crochet through both squares okay so i think you guys got this so just continue so we did this one did the corner so continue down to the uh, bottom of it come up and stop because remember we have to leave an opening it sounds funny but one time I got carried away and I sewed all four sides and I was like oops wait a minute <laughs> so just wanted to let you know all right I'll see you guys uh back when you have all three sides sewn up Okay, so I just got done sewing up all three sides. So when you get uh, back, you know, when you get around, now on just the one, on the one side of, um, you know, the back square, we're just going to go right around the top here and just put a single crochet in each one until we get back over here. So I already started going across and then I was like, oops, I forgot to tell my friends that we're going around the rim here. So we're just going to put one single crochet all the way around, just kind of you know, to make this a little neater up top here. And for the the sides, you know, just give it a nice finish and look. Okay. Hope everybody is following along with this and understanding what I'm saying. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible, as beginner friendly as possible. And, uh, you know, I want everyone to make cute bags, whether it's for themselves. I can make it for a Christmas present. You know, I just think they're just so cute. All right, so let's finish this around and I'll meet you guys when we get uh, back over at the beginning. All right, so I made it all the way back around. Um, just slip stitched into the first single crochet and here's my end, which I will worry about later. Okay, so now we have our Granny Square 
pouch bag okay so everyone's like easy got it comfortable now we're gonna get to the part that everybody's nervous about and i'm telling you it's not that bad it's really not it's time to sew in the lining okay um first i just wanted to say that um I know a lot of people were like, oh, I don't have a sewing machine. You don't need a sewing machine. And I'm going to do this by hand so the people that don't have a sewing machine can see that they could do it too. And it's simple. And if you have a sewing machine, you just want to sew up the sides, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to do it by hand so, you know, people don't feel like, oh, I need a sewing machine to do this. Also, I did want to show that... Um, if you can't afford a sewing machine or you don't have the space, I have a sewing machine that's in my, um, my shed, but at the moment I just do not have room for it. So, um, I picked this up at Walmart. I think it was like, mm, what was it? 20 25 it's like 20 to 30 dollars i can't remember how much i spent it's called so simple it's a handheld sewing machine i just ran out of uh yarn on my bobbin here so i have to replace that but this is so nice you just uh you plug it in to the wall and then you plug it where's the thing and then you plug it back here into the um the little handheld thing. Here's an on off button. You have to pick the foot up, put the foot down, the tension. And it's so easy because if you just need like a quick little sew, I mean this isn't for anything like a big project, but for sewing like up liners or you know, you have to sew, you know. I don't know, something real quick, have a pan or something. And you just, you know, you put it in and you hold it by the handle and you turn it on and did, 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 did. you're good to go. So I just wanted to give people a little option that, you know, it does make sewing up the sides a little bit easier and quicker. But, and also, you know, you don't need this big bulky sewing machine. You have this little handheld one. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, so. Now, let's get a little space here. Okay, so we are going to take our fabric. And now you can um, fold, if you have it where you can fold the fabric in half and then have like this folded part at the bottom, that's one less side that's like one less thing that you have to sew because then that'll sit right in the bottom of the bag. But if you have two, um, say like fat quarters or, you know, two pieces of, um, fabric, then you're going to have to do, um, what we did for, uh, the bag. You know, you just gonna have to sew the one side, the one side, the one side. So you got to throw up that. You're going to have to sew the three sides up. But if you have fabric that's in one piece, like this, we can just fold it and that's one less that you don't have to sew. Okay, just wanted to give you guys a little tips and tricks. So you just wanna measure up your bag. So you kinda just, let me fold this here. So you kind of want it like this, like the size of your bag. A little bit. I like to go to the size of the bag. So it'd be here. So I'll cut along here. I like to give myself a little, <coughs> excuse me. I like to give myself a little uh, extra leeway because sometimes I tend to come in a little bit on the sides 
and I don't know, I just think it sits in the bag better. Okay, so you want to measure up your square, get your scissors. Maybe I should do it like this. Hold up. Hold up. So you guys could see. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Now I'm just going to... Cut this fabric. Let me get my square out of here. my bag out of the way. Don't want to cut that. Okay. Get our extra piece out of the way. Okay, let's move our bag out of the way because we don't need that at the moment. Okay, so what you guys want to do is you want to make sure that the good side of the bag is facing each other. So this time we want the good sides facing each other and the bad side, well not the bad side, but you know, the back side up. Okay, so now we're going to take our, let's get our pins all set here. Okay, so now we're going to get our pins and I just throw about maybe, maybe two or three just to hold the sides together so it's easier for when I sew up it's staying together so we'll just throw in two like that and then I come around to the other side and I put two in one two okay so now I have my, um, my fabric is cut, the good side, the nice side, you know, that you want to see in your bag is facing each other. You have the sides, uh, pinned up. So now let's get our yarn. I mean, oh my gosh, our yarn, our thread. <laughs> We got to get sewing. Put yarn on the brain. Okay. So, like I said, you want to get a thread that matches um, the lining. Doesn't necessarily have to match the crochet project. Okay. So, I'm going to take... Now, I'm going to thread my needle. I take one of these little thingies I don't know what it's called because even though I have glasses my eyes are not the best when it comes to this little thread okay so I put that into the needle and then I put the thread into that part and then it pulls it through and threads the needle for me that is a great invention okay so now you just want to pull some out, you know, enough that you think you'll need to sew up the side. Okay. And then what I do is, whoops, I'm getting, oh no, I'm getting knotted already. I was going to say, watch out for your yarn knot. Um, Oh my gosh, why do I keep calling this yarn? <laughs> Your thread. Make sure it doesn't get knotted. Can you guys see this? I know it's white and it's kind of kind of hard to see. Okay. So you want to pull out what you think. Snip. Okay. Put the thread to the side. Then you kind of just want to, you know, make sure it's kind of even on your needle down here. And then I like to just put a knot uh, down at the bottom of the thread. Oh my gosh, 
I cannot see. Okay. Took a minute, but I got it. All right, I'm gonna do another one. So two knots. Okay. All right, that's gonna be your hardest part is not that. <laughs> All right, so now let's get to our fabric. All right, and what we're gonna do, actually I'm gonna start down here. Start down at the bottom so when you go up it'll be, you won't have that tail. All right, so you just wanna poke through the fabric and pull it. Okay, till you get to the end. And then I just like to go through the thread and pull. So that kind of keeps it in place there. So it's not coming out. Okay. So then we're just going to go... in and back through so we're just going to go back and forth just going back and forth back and forth okay so now we're in the back we're going to come through the front Okay, you don't want to pull too tight, but, and go back through. And this is it. We're just going to go up the whole side, just going back and forth. Going through the back. this is the, uh, sometimes it could be soothing. Sometimes it can be annoying. But this is where everyone likes to sew a machine. This is where, like, the handheld machine comes in handy. I usually just sew up the sides with, sometimes I'll do it by hand. But lately I've been using that because it's just, Z -Z -Z -Z, done. But I will do it by hand today. To show you guys and to show the people that, you know, that don't really, you know, aren't really into sewing or don't really know much about it. And I mean, by all means, I am no professional. I don't know anything about really sewing except for just like the basics. That is it. So I am with you guys. But it's just the liner just really makes the bags look so much better and so more complete. And it really does help with, um, you know, making them last longer and not stretch as much. <gasps> ah, okay. I just stabbed myself. So be careful. You don't want to do that. Normally I stab myself with the pin, the pins that hold the fabric together. That was just a straight up needle. That hurt. Okay. And speaking of the pins, as you uh, work down the fabric and you get like past the pins a little bit, you can, you know, you can take them out. That's just holding it. Oh. Caught on the other pin now. That's just, you know, that was just to hold it.
for us to hold it together. Right, you just got to be patient with this because this stuff knots and tangles and gets caught on stuff. As you could see, I have to keep fixing it each stitch, but it's going to look pretty in the end, so it'll be worth it. All right. So, finish sewing this side up, guys. And, uh, I'll meet you on the, when I gotta do the other side, okay? Alright. Okay, guys, so I finished this, sewing this side up over here. And I just got done finishing up this side over here. I am ending it right now. Um, what I like to do is I'll just go in oh my gosh I'm getting caught on everything guys okay go back through a few times oh my gosh everything keeps nodding okay so once you go through a few times on that last step then I just make a loop the needle through and make just make a few knots over here it doesn't have to be perfect this is you know the inside of your bag you just want to make sure it doesn't untangle doesn't come apart that we don't want Okay, once you did a few knots, just want to cut it. Okay, put it in your pin cushion. Okay, and here we have it. Our sides have been sewn up. As you can see, mine are not perfect. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's sewn up to the best of my ability. Now, comes the fun part all right let's get our bag back in play here all right so now what you want to do is open up your fabric and put your hand in it and then what you're going to do is open up your bag and you want to push the fabric into your bag push the corners into the corners you know, get it all nicey nice. Okay. Nice. Now what you want to do is bring your pins back into the situation. And we're going to take the top of the liner and you want to just fold it down a little bit. Just a little bit. Because if you just sew it on, you're going to get all these, like, straggly pieces from, like, the fabric um, from where we cut. And that don't look pretty. We want our stuff to look pretty. All right. So what you want to do is you just want to fold it over just a little bit, like so. And then you're going to line it up to the bottom. See, here's our uh, our single crochet row, right below that single crochet row. And then you just want to take your pins and you want to pin it in place so it doesn't so when we sew we're sewing we're sewing it ah okay yep that happens to me a lot i hope you guys aren't stabbing yourself as much as i am oh that's the that's the worst part about uh sewing for me it's how many times i get stabbed these needles and pins okay 
So you just go right along. Again, I just put like, you know, two or three in to hold it. I'm just gonna do two. Okay, and then when you come over to the side, same thing, fold it down and just put it so it, you know, so it meets up with the side. My pin. Okay. Now I switch to the other side. Get. Can you see? I'm sorry. Do I? I keep going out of frame. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So we fold this side down. Just a bit. Okay. We want to match this up. With the bottom of, oops, the bottom row of the single crochet row. Okay, I need another, another two pins out. Okay. Line it up. Each pin. And pin it in place. Ah! <laughs> Got myself again. Okay. All right, and now we're back to this corner. So just do the same thing. Fold my in frame, fold it down, match it up with the corner. Well, not the corner, you know what I mean, the, the side. The corner of the fabric to the side of that. Right, and then we just got to sew this on and we're almost done guys now this um with sewing the liner on uh to my crochet piece i always hand sew i don't like using the sewing machine because i'll show you when i do it you just want to take like a piece of the, um, like you just want to go under a piece of the stitch and then through the fabric. With the sewing machine, it's going to go do, 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 And then you get the stitches, like you get the stitches line out here. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like how that looks. I think this way it gives it like a cleaner look. So, let's get our needle threaded. Let's take this one out from before. All right. And then keep your little pin cushion or whatever you use handy. So, as we're sewing around and, uh, you know, we take them out, they go somewhere so they're not... So, you know, so we don't lose them. Okay, whoops. Put that through. Pull it through. I love that little tool. Okay, so now we just want to, you know, pull a good amount out. Depending how big your bag is. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to cut that out of the way. Okay, and then we take it. And... Okay. 
Okay, got the ends. You want to hold the ends, pull it out, make sure everything's even, even Steven. Okay. Make our knot at the end. And then I'm going to split these two and make a knot with them. Okay. So let's go, guys. Here we go. We're almost there. All right. So what you're going to do, this is the only time I go through the crochet piece. So you just, for that first stitch, I like to go through like that. And then our knot stops it. All right. So we are... Instead of going back and forth and back and forth like we did when we sewed up the lining, what you want to do is, so we came, we have the, you know, we're out through the lining here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the lining. Can you guys see? Through the lining. And when we go through the lining, you're just going to pick up just like part of a stitch can you see that so if you look i'm going through part i'm um, through the fabric through part of the stitch but if you turn it around i'm not through this part you don't want to go through here just that first stitch and i'll show you we're going to hide that okay so then once you go through the fabric and the part of the stitch in the back you're gonna pull up pull through okay then we're gonna let's move this pin a little bit and then we go so now we're through that now we go through the fabric. And pull. Wait. Okay. I was like, what did I do? Okay. So. So we're going to. Go through the fabric, pick a part of that stitch, pull, why oh, this thread keeps knotting on me. Pull. Okay, now we come out, through the fabric, all right, now we go through the fabric, pick up the stitch, like I said, we're not on the other side, and pull, and we come through the fabric and then we're going to come through the fabric oh, sorry through the fabric through the stitch
Okay. And then we come through the fabric. I hope you guys are, oops. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing and understand what I'm saying. So you go, you kind of want to, you know, you could kind of pull it, put your finger in between here and you just want to poke through the fabric, pick up part, let's see if I can show you, poke through the fabric. And then you just want to pick up part of a stitch let's get that out of here and pull see and then nothing's on the other side and you can't really see this because we picked a thread that matches our lining see so it just looks nice so nice okay so now we come back through the lining. Okay, let's get this pin out of here. Okay. Now we have to go back through the lining. Go through a stitch and then if you start getting comfortable you can kind of like kind of like weave so you go through a stitch and then come through the fabric and then go through the fabric go through that And then we just do this all the way around. When you start getting comfortable, you don't really have to like look. You could kind of just feel that you have that you're through a stitch. fabric okay going through All right, so hopefully you guys are getting the idea, the gist of it, because I don't want to bore you and sit and go around, but I want to make sure you guys are getting that. We are just going through the fabric and just part of the back of the stitch, not going through the stitch, just through like part of the back of the stitch just to catch it so sew it on and then you're coming back through the fabric and we're just going to do this all the way around and again see I'm not going I'm not going through I'm just catching the back of it and it should look a little something like this again i am not a prof you know i not a good sewer so you know we, we just do our best you know that's all we just do the best of our ability of what we can i think it went up a little too high but it's all right okay 
All right, so I'm going to finish doing this, and I'll meet you guys when we get back around. Have fun. All right, guys, so we made it all the way around, uh, around the bag. Uh, I hope you guys did okay with it. It wasn't too bad for you. Uh, so what I did is, now that I am back to the beginning, <clears throat> I just went through this a few times, made a knot. Now I am going to go through and try to come out where we went in and that's out. Okay. So I pull that through and then what I did, no, what I do <laughs> is I knot these, make a knot with this. Do about two. Okay. Trim that some. And then what I do is I take my <clears throat> I take my crochet hook and I push them in. Let's see. Sometimes you have to go through another uh, stitch. There you go. And then you pull it through. And then just shove it in between the lining and the bag. I mean, you can do this whatever way you want, but this is what I normally do. I just just pull it through, let it hang out inside between the bag and the liner. It usually doesn't pop out or nothing. I don't know why this one's giving me such trouble. Probably because I'm trying to show you guys. Normally it just goes right in. <clears throat> okay. Just, just take the liner sometimes and open it like that and it goes right in. See? And there we have it, guys. Our bag is lined. How'd you do? I bet it looks fantastic. Okay, so now we are on our last part, and then we are all done. <clears throat> okay, so, excuse me. That's a... Okay. Now you want to get out your, uh, your yarn needle. You want to bring on over your strap. And we want to cut some yarn. Now, if you left, <clears throat> excuse me, if you left like uh, a long tail for this uh, at the end of your strap, you can use this to sew it back and forth. Uh, I just like getting a new, a new piece of yarn. So you just want to cut, you know, not too much. Maybe like, you know, about 10, 12 inches. I don't know. I never really measure. Not, I'm, I'm a guesstimation kind of person. <laughs> so now you just want to put the yarn into your needle. Get that set up. Okay, so now we want to take our bag. And we're going to take our handle. You know, 
figure out what side you want to use. Okay, and then you're going to turn it to the side here. Okay. Now, I put it where... So here's the bag, and then here's the handle, and then I'm going to whip stitch it back and forth, and then when you come up, it's going to be like so. Okay, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, so this, if you did it the way I did it, I did five stitches across, right? So here, you kind of want to figure five stitches across. So you have one, two, that's four, three or five. So we'll put, look, this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in. a little bit of a tail and then we're going to tie this to make sure it's secure okay and then we're going to come back around and go through the stitch oh my gosh go through and go through and pull and that gives it a whip stitch Now you can go over these tails if you want. I think I might just, I think I might just weave them in, but I'll go over this little one. Okay. Now we go through the next stitch, through the next stitch, pull, next stitch, next stitch, and pull. Right. I'm going to go, <clears throat> uh, you could go one time if you want. I'm going to go back this way now. Uh, I want to, you know, just to be a little, just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So now you're going to do the same thing, but you just go in the opposite direction like so oh am I out of frame I can't see all right and you know what I'm gonna go one more time just for good measure Okay, and then, so when you have it like that, and then when you open it up, it looks like that on the other side, so it lays nice and flat to it, and that's not too bad either. So now I'm going to take this, tie a knot, I'm all about the knots, I don't want anything coming undone. I think I might have pulled that a little too tight. Okay. 
Oops. Okay. Snip. I'm gonna weave these in. And uh alright, so let's go so go do the same thing on the other side and I'll meet you at the end. Alright guys, I just got done sewing up the other strap and I weaved in my ends and here we go. Our bag is done. I think it came out so cute. There's my lining. Here's my bag. Here's the handle. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and um, I hope you guys decide to make one. I hope it made uh, sewing not as scary for you. And uh, if you guys end up do making the bag, please email me so I can see your beautiful creations. And if it's okay, I will put it on my channel. Um, all right, guys. So have a great day and I'll hook up with you later. Bye. Thank you.